Good morning. This is Pamela Bluewater for JNS Biblical Productions. We are here at Noah's Ark at the top of Mount Ararat to interview Noah just after the flood. Noah has just come out together with his three sons, his wife, and all the animals and creatures that move along the ground and all the birds of the sky, one kind after another. Noah built an altar to the Lord and sacrificed burnt offerings on it as thanks to God. So let's talk to Noah now. Hi, it's good to have you here. So now I understand that God said he will never destroy again all the living creatures and curse the ground because of humans. Is that right? Yes. He indicated as long as the earth endures, day and night will never cease. So be it. Now that you and your family feel safe for future generations to come, would you tell us what you have learned from the flood and God? Miss Bluewater, there are so many lessons to be learned, it's hard to say where to start. I feel at the beginning God is willing to provide a way to begin again with Him. He wants a relationship with us and will go above and beyond to provide a way for that. I think this will apply in future generations of humans as well as just for me and my family. All right. How about your understanding of God? What did you learn? I'd say I learned we will not always understand God and his ways, but we can trust him. God sees the bigger picture. He knows the sinful state of the world, but loves the world and us humans enough to intervene. We may not always know God's timetable, but his timing is good. He has the eternal perspective in mind. Why do you feel you can totally trust God now than ever before? When he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded, as in Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, I knew then he is a promise keeper. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 12, God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you, and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. Wow, now that is a powerful promise for the future. Look at the promises in Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. So I am getting from you that you are very grateful. Yes, God bless me and my family. And for what he said, I surmise that God loves all of us and has a plan for us that is for our eternal good. I feel he has been working out a plan from the beginning of time to give hope to all of us, his children. God has been working on this plan since before we were born. In Genesis chapter 9, verse 9, God's covenant reaches way out into the distant future. I now establish my covenant with you, he said, and your descendants after you. I have a personal question. What about unimportant people like receptionists from JNS Biblical Productions? Does the future hold something for us, like, you know, dishwashers, garbage collectors, horse and buggy drivers? Of course, Miss Sedgway, all human beings. He didn't say there were unimportant people, and he didn't say his covenant was only for kings, noblemen, and the very rich and famous. Wow. And God has a covenant with me, and I can sleep at night knowing that at last I'm included. So that settles it. Noah's story and lessons and God's covenant applies to everyone all the way through the 21st century and further. This is Pamela Bluewater for J&S Biblical saying, read Genesis chapter 6 through 9 for the whole truth and to instill hope and assurance that God loves us and is with us. Good morning.